when you can understand your anatomy, a lot of the, the little um, tips that I'm gonna give, things that I'm going to tell you in relation to how you move and how to shift your balance and shift your alignment, they make a lot more sense and it's actually a lot easier to make those adjustments when you can picture what's going on inside your own body and then also inside the horse's body. So if we think about simplifying the idea of balance in riding to the point where we're keeping our center of mass over the horse's center of mass. So our center of mass is basically the point where um, gravity pulls down and where we're best aligned. So for example, with me just standing here, when I stand upright with my center of mass over my feet, I can stand pretty easily and I don't need to use a lot of effort to do so. But if I start leaning forward, now I have to use a lot more muscular effort in, or, in order to hold myself because my center of mass is no longer balanced over my feet. And you can think about this the same with a horse. When horse and rider are both very well balanced, movement is a lot easier. When we're out of balance, we can still move, but we start having to use a lot more muscle to hold ourselves. If, for example, we're leaning too far forward, we're leaning too far back, or the same for the horse. If the horse has his weight really far forward so that he's got more weight on his front legs versus if he starts to shift his weight back and he starts to carry more weight on his hind end and better balance his weight for easy movement. So let's begin by just taking a look at the skeleton of the horse. And in some of the later lessons, when we talk about uh, improving the movement of the horse, this is gonna be a really important lesson that you might wanna come back to. So if we look at the basic anatomy, we have the cervical vertebra, and then we have thoracic vertebra going into the lumbar. We've obviously got the rib cage, we have the column of the front leg, and we have the hind leg, and we have the horse's pelvis in here. A few interesting things just to note on this skeleton is for one, the front leg um, is only connected to the body through connective tissue. So there's not actually like a bone to bone joint that attaches the front leg to the horse's body. And also we can look at this particular um, diagram of the skeleton also has a few of the ligaments included on here. So this is the nuchal ligament system, and then this is the supraspinous ligament. And when we're talking about a, improving a horse's movement, getting them to drop their head and neck and lift their back, you can see how the relation of the head and neck carriage to the back is really important because of these ligament connections. So if I forward to our next slide here, I love this image because it does a great job of highlighting the um, similar points between horse and rider. So we basically have the same skeleton. It's obviously just evolved to be different and have different functions, but we have the same basic bones. So you can see here in purple, the horse's pelvis, our pelvis, the scapula or shoulder blade, and our scapula. And what's most fascinating is if we look at um, our arms compared to the horse's front legs, the horse is essentially standing on what would be our middle finger. So the carpals, which for us is in the wrist, is actually the horse's knee. And then similar, similarly, if we look at the hind leg, our knee is the horse's stifle. And they have a patella, a kneecap, just like we do. And then the heel, calcaneus, is the hock on the horse. So why this is an interesting diagram to look at is when you start thinking about understanding ways that your horse moves or ways that you move, just imagine um, taking your body, your skeleton, and flipping it so that it's horizontal, and you can start to get an idea of what your horse feels. So if you start to kind of experiment with different concepts like going down on all fours and lifting your back, shifting your weight back and forth, you can develop a feel for the sensations that the horse has and what you are um, asking the horse to do and the kind of movements that you want to start um, encouraging from the horse in order for the better weight-bearing posture. 
So while we're gonna go more in depth on what that is in a later lesson, I just wanted to introduce it now because everything that um, I teach in regards to riding is really about having good alignment and good balance because whether you are just starting out or whether you're an advanced rider looking to take things to the next level, this is really the most important component for all of us. So we're going to look at another shot here. This is skeleton of a rider on a horse. And here's where we can start talking about a few different um, kind of form pieces. So because this rider is bareback, their leg has come forward. So their legs kind of come forward into what would be the girth groove if we could see all of the, you know, the flesh and the soft tissue on this horse. And we can see that this rider is leaning back a little bit too far. So if we imagine their center of mass being right about here, this rider is probably having to use a little more effort to keep themselves from falling backwards. And when this horse would step forward, this rider would experience a little bit of this feeling, like they're kind of getting thrown back from the upper body as the horse moves. So if, it, if I was teaching this horse and rider pair, the first thing that I would probably tell this rider is to think about just shifting their upper body and their rib cage a little bit forward so that their upper body was over their, um, their pelvis, over their hips, and that would already bring them into a better balance. But I think just seeing the, the skeletal visual starts to give you an idea again of what's going on inside your own body. So we're gonna continue with this in the next slide. And here we've just got a back view of the same two skeletons. So here it's a great example because we can see that this rider is kind of leaning off here to the side. And again, if you can imagine this being a real horse and rider pair, this rider is gonna feel like they're falling this direction. Their horse is gonna continually be shifting this direction to the left in order to stay under the rider's weight. So one of the interesting things about our nervous system, and this is true for the horse too, is that it wants to keep the body upright. So even if this rider was giving a strong aid for the horse to say turn to the right, but they were leaning this way to the left, the nervous system is going to take that information for balance and staying in balance and staying upright over responding to a trained cue. So this horse is probably gonna to continue to adjust itself to try to stay in balance with the weight of the rider, even if that's contrary to what the rider is aware of or the cues that they think they're giving. So what I wanna do next is highlight a few important parts of our body, and one of these is the rib cage. So here we have the rib cage, and highlighted is the sternum, or the breastbone. And I want you to notice a few things about the rib cage. First, how high the ribs come up. So some people tend to think of the rib cage as just being here, but our rib cage actually comes, so this top rib here is going under our um, clavicle, our collarbone. So the rib, the rib cage is quite large, and when we think something like shoulders back, instead of pulling our shoulder blades back, if we expand our rib cage and we let the um, sternum kind of think letting it float forward as we expand through our rib cage, then that's gonna have a big impact on not only our stability and our posture and the way that we breathe, but it's going to achieve that shoulders back position by allowing our shoulder blades to slide back on the rib cage versus pulling them back, which is gonna throw the rib cage forward. Another really important part of riding is the hip joints. And I have an actual model here to show you the hip joints. So I'm going to go back to one of our um, pictures. I think we'll use this one. So here you can see on the, the image the hip joint of the rider. So this is a really interesting um, exercise that I have now started doing after taking many of the clinics with Wendy Murdoch and helping her teach some clinics because a lot of people don't have an awareness of where your hip joints are, but they are probably one of the most important joints for us as riders. So right now, whether you're sitting, watching this on your phone, I want you to point to your hip joints. So now I want you to notice where you pointed. A lot of people will point up here 
And this is what we often refer to as the hip, but this is actually the top of your pelvis. So what you're feeling in this area is the top of your pelvis. The actual joint is the ball and socket where your femur comes into your pelvis. So if you lift your leg and you wiggle your leg a little bit, now you can notice that you don't actually have movement up here, the movement is lower. So if you take your finger up the crease of your pants, about to the um, seam on the outside, I have a button that highlights that quite well. And now if I put my finger there and I move, while the actual joint is much deeper, I can feel that this is where the movement's happening. And if we again look at our model, you can see exactly how this ball fits into the socket and that creates the hip joint. Saying things like open the hip, which means opening the angle from torso to thigh. So this would be closing the hip joint angle. This would be opening the hip joint angle, letting that open and allowing more movement in the hip joints versus gripping with the legs, which will restrict that movement. Now it's your turn. Leave a comment below and tell me which part of your body will you be more aware of the next time you ride. If you're not watching this on horseclass.com, that's where the best conversation is and we have hundreds more free videos like this one and premium courses to help you find the joy in your riding and connect with your horse.